The Illuminating Gas is a, is a solo show by Carrot Queen Evans. It's the biggest show so far it has ever had. And um, it's not a retrospective in the sense it doesn't really look at all the corpus of work it did that is very vast, but it's a, it's a show that certainly um, looks at the unconventional way in which Carrot, all over a career of almost 40 years now, uh, has been reimagined, reconsidered the way how the visual mechanisms and the perception of an artwork. Uh, as the title uh, suggests, the show is also an homage or, or, or a thought to what we don't necessarily see with our eyes. In fact, the illuminated gas is literally a gas, a neon, and it's uh, one of the major uh, elements of the show, light. The, the show opens with this massive installation. It's titled Star, 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 Steer to Transverse Photon. And it, it seems to be seven columns that reaches almost the ceiling of the building, which is literally almost 20 meters high. But in fact, they are not columns in the sense they are not touching the floor. And in fact, in all the Navate, in the main space of the exhibition, uh, nothing is, uh, is touching the floor. Everything is suspended. The columns of light follows also a choreography in the sense the, the light goes on and off. Um, according to a mechanism that reminds the, the act of breathing. And in a sense, uh, it's also playing together or in resonance to, uh, to another work that really occupies also the entire space, which is composition for 37 flutes. It's a sound piece that is uh, the function as, a, as an organ, in the sense that the air is, uh, is taken directly from the, from the space, and then it's uh, given back to the space, to the environment, as a form of sound. The works uh, shown in the major space are composed by a series of sculptures that Kerry has been working the last really few years, about three, four years now. And the way he constructs the composition reminds really um, a music, a music piece. This moment of silence or of void, and then there's a moment of very fast movement and, and compression. On the right side of the nave, on the ale, there's a, this massive installation that uh, Carrot originally conceived for Trade Britain in London for the Duvin Galleries. It's titled Forms in Space by Light in Time and it is literally uh, what the title uh, says. So it's a composition of uh, forms, so pieces of uh, neon made by light and, and kind of composed into time and space. The coda is made in particular by two uh, sculptures from the No series that, that goes together with uh, other 11 sculptures that are literally punctuating uh, the, the side space. And they act as a sort of, to me, they, they remind a sort of ballet or movement. All these sculptures, they, they, they are a transposition of drawings, in particularly kata patterns. Kata is a Japanese um, name for that uh, stands for the, for the pattern, for the uh, model used in the classical Japanese theater, the No Theater, uh, to indicate to the performers uh, the way how to perform characters or emotions or situations. In the Kubo, the Kubo is, uh, might also be described as a constellation of different works, and in fact the works that uh, open the space is, uh, is titled Constellation and it's a, it's a mobile made up of 16 holographic speakers that on one side they are mirrored and on the other side they are transmitting different 16 tracks of different sounds. In the same way, just beside there is another work that, is, that creates a sort of film in real life. It's made up by two light, two spots light, very standard. Uh, spotlight and, uh, and a combination of, uh, uh, of plants and despite the title that uh, is still life in fact uh, it's it's moving it's really two plants are slightly slightly moving and turning on a on a turntable uh, creating their, their shadow um, a film on uh, on the wall and finally at the outside the building there's a very early piece from Carrot from 1994 it's, uh, it's titled TIX3, that is literally the transcription uh, in neon light of the, of the exit sign. 
it's so tiny, it's almost invisible. You have to look for it. You literally have to walk along uh, the building, go to the back, discover it. But it's so meaningful and it's so powerful. It really was kind of um, immediately putting you in a subversive way uh, of looking at things.